Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Gap Down Backer podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking Belly Sweep, one of the uh, plays off our Belly series that we started on episode two. Uh, before we get started, though, Coach Deary, how you doing? I'm great, man. Never better. Good. Glad to hear that. Um, and kind of just, I mean, it's a good day. Been there to talk football. I just saw at the time of our recording that um, the Pac-12 is going to play at 9 a.m. on Sunday. So, um, hey. hey been there, done that. Not fun. Yeah, but 48 hours time, notice. Same time. Hey, hey, we've been there 48 hours notice to get, get a game. I mean, heck, we've had – Less than 24 hours notice this year with some COVID policies and stuff. So, um, yeah, I just love it when guys get an opportunity to compete. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to name conference. Uh, Levin Baring, commissioner, is the exact <laughs> opposite of being flexible under anyone else's circumstances. Uh, I didn't want to name a specific name, but if you know who I'm talking about, uh, so kudos to the Pac-12 and other conferences yeah. for getting it done and scheduling it and letting the kids compete. I, I mean, um, it's, if it being healthy enough. It's not Maction, but we'll take it. Um, go Bobcats. Action. Hey, hey, I am a proud alumni of Ohio University, so I will gladly say go Maction. Um, they have upcoming the dreaded Miami Red Hawks here soon, so um, gotta get right. It's 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 Red Hawk Week. We gotta bow the bricks, baby. Um, right now, I'm taking, I'm taking the, I'm taking Miami cover and that's bad. Oh, me, me, it, me and I have some more awards this week. I'm going to lock them up. Now, 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 the horrible thing about this is this podcast is going to come out about four or five weeks after that game. And they'll be like, these two are idiots. But, whole nother conversation. So, all right, all right I'm going to break down Belly Sweep real quick. Um, for those of you who don't know what Belly Sweep is, um, the short, simplified version is you fake belly, you hand off to the wing for the sweep. Um, it's an off tackle pl- well it's a sweep I mean I shouldn't have to really explain that too much it's a handoff sweep um, it's almost I, I, I almost say it's almost like a reverse ad- to, to a point like it, that's 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 to me what it almost is um, I personally have never had really success running it uh, I mean you will get to that here in a minute but I want to hit the rules first um, and some are the same some are a little different um, but this is kind of what I've done in the past. I know you've done in the past. I looked at your sheet that you sent me from back way in the day. Um, we did not run belly sweep this year. Um, actually, I don't think we've run a belly sweep either the year. Coach Kearns has been here. Not a good one. No. So I haven't, I haven't run it since I was at a Fairfield Christian Academy. Um, so it's been a while. Um, but, um, again, like, like in episode two, I'm just going to just run down the list. It's simple that way. Um, if you got questions – uh, message me. I, I know for our belly part one, I had somebody messaging me about the gut blocking on belly. I, I, I responded to it pretty quickly, and I had another guy who I drew it up and sent it to. Um, I'll gladly, me or Coach Derry, if you want to message us, comment on the videos, comment on the Facebook post where I post these, one of us will get back to you ASAP. We'll either send, DM you some stuff, or heck, I'll set up, we'll set up Zooms with you. I don't really care. I, I just like talking football. Um, so kind of first, uh, quarterback, obviously, reverse pivot. You fake, you, you fake the belly handoff to the fullback. Um, it doesn't have to be like a long, super long ride, and I think that's where some teams get a little too much in. They try to sell the fake too much. It doesn't have to be great, but also don't make it sloppy. Um, and then you hand off um, to the backside wing who's coming across. Um, fullback is obviously belly fake, and then kind of just fill that A to B gap hole, um, kind of just where you're seeing pressure leak from. Um, play side wing, sells his belly insert, Inside linebacker block, um, just to kind of draw in any overhang and to get the um, play side linebacker to come downhill. Um, play side ta- tackle, I got gap down on. Uh, play side guard, pull and pin. Um, or I say is a log block, essentially to me. Uh, but kind of also depends on what you're getting. Um, that's usually probably any an outside backer. And then kind of depends on what happens. Uh, centers on backside. Backside guard is pull and block first man past your other pull. I mean, it's I mean, it could be a safety, it could be a scraping backer. It's pick up your first threat. I mean, uh, backside tackle, pull check hinge. I mean, you just make sure nothing leaks from the backside essentially. Um, but if and this is where tight end. If you call it to the tight end, because we talked we talked episode four, calling belly the strong side. Um, you probably won't run belly sweep to the strong side, but you can. Um, 
If it's two, it's gap on. If it's away, he's at touchdown um, stove pipe block. Okay. Um, same thing with that uh, the receiver, the split end. Um, if it's two, he's going to block the corner. If it's away from him, touchdown stove pipe block. Okay. Get a safety. Okay. Worst, I mean, worst case, you don't get there. Best case, he cuts right off you in that block. Um, and then that backside wing, um, you can no mow it, you can mow it. Um, kind of depends on the formation and where you're going. If you mow it, it's probably some sort of rocket, rocket-esque motion, a slow rocket motion. Um, but, I mean, he's your belly sweep guy. He's the guy after you fake, you'll hand off to. Um, the other thing is, and, and kind of a key coaching point I've learned throughout the years, and as I was just double-checking some of my reading of some of the material I had, and as I prepared for these videos, is the one thing with that backside wing as, as – you're getting ready to hand off to him. You don't want him to get too deep. And I think that's a – you. I mean, a lot of offenses, and when you're installing new plays or you're doing something for the first time, is I think that's an underrated coaching point is the depth of the that sweep. I mean, you don't want him to be two yards deeper than the fullback. I, I want him to come across the line at the same depth as the fullback so your quarterback can go fake, sweep. It, it, should, it should be like maybe one step. Like, it's not, I want to fake and then run deeper, okay? It's here, there. Um, and for some people who are watching the video of this, you're seeing me get a little animated. I'm kind of a little limited given I'm in a nice chair. But um, any comments on any of that, Coach, before we kind of get into uh, what makes it go and uh, stuff? Really, uh, uh, you, you hammered everything, especially I think the most important aspect of this is um, – that that play side guard really needs to be a dude, and uh, but everything else is right on the money from a rule. Um, and really a big emphasis on the uh, um, what should call it uh, fullback making sure it's a good fake, and really making sure there's no because uh, again we talk we talk about this in the other episode in the Buck Suite. If you pull two guards. You leave two huge gaping holes, you know. So you got to make sure that you you pull and replace guys. You're the guys you're, you're replacing the pool guys better, you know. And backside that's the tackle, and play side that's the uh, fullback, and that that that's the kind of stuff that, you know. Ideally, you want your coordinator coaching, you know what I mean? And because those are the details that that shows how disciplined you are. Um, but you can't those, – those are by far two of the biggest uh, unsung heroes in this, in this place. I mean, yeah, that, that is it, – it, I mean, and he talked – Coach Eimer in Episode 5 talked about the t he, they worked and repped the tandem of the center and the fullback and picking up the A-gaps and making sure everything's secure. I also had that same conversation when I filmed a clinic uh, for my YouTube channel um, by Coach Bennett on a guard tackle counter. Um, and he talked about how when they ran the quarterback counter or just the counter in general and they f gave that fake, he said a lot of times, and he shows it on his video, a lot of times when the stuff gets blown up from that pulling side, it's because his, full, his fake back did not take a good enough angle. He'd go too wide instead of going tight, pretty much what I call an old school J block when, we, when I ran the double wing, that J block and that path to make sure no, just to pick up any of that loose ends. Um, and, and, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's, to me, that's where, I mean, because we talked about Belly, about the back, that kind of unsung hero um, was that backside tackle. And, and then my voice just popped hardcore there. Um, and I, to me on here, it's that center and fullback. Like, there, it, you can't have that massive, the, the, those massive holes. We got, we have to, our center has to go on backside, pretty much pick up that one, two eye, head up, nose, depending on what it is. And that fullback has to pick up that other guy, um, especially if it's like a blitzing linebacker. So, I mean, that's kind of where to go with it. Um, but you, I mean, we talked off screen, crap, an hour ago. Um, what makes belly sweep go? Because, like I said, I'm not. Now, when I was at FCA, we weren't a belly team. I'm not gonna say here we we were more buck or jet sweep trap. Um, but we did like for any time I've tried to run it, it's been. Slow is the term I probably use. Sure. Not efficient. Um, but then I watch other teams run it. Some run it, and it's like it looks slow, but it still hits. Um, 
and our team just run it really well. So, I mean, what, what in your opinion makes Belly Sweep go? Uh, having a, a beast of a fullback that runs Belly. Um, because, I mean, p- part of it is, at the end of the day, it's a constraint play, right? Um, and a, a lot of people just don't come out of the gate and run the, our base play as Belly Sweep, you know? It's a hell of a constraint play. Um, the one thing, we, we, my first year coaching, we had two wings that were blazers. So we just ran jet, right? And then belly underneath of it. The year after, we had guys that could run, but they couldn't run quite as well. So jet wasn't, and we, we moved to a tougher league. So jet wasn't hitting for the long games that we wanted to. So we're like, well, how can we hit the perimeter in a little bit more deceptive way? And I think we had a phenomenal fullback that rushed for um, probably close to five thousand dollars in three years. Um, one of the first sophomore starters at typical new history, and he, he was just phenomenal. And long, long story short, um, obviously when we ran belly, there was never a time where we didn't run jet motion with it. So what we struggled with at first was we never ran no mo belly. So when we went no more belly, we always went belly sweep. So we would run belly sweep, but there was no motion. So team picked up on that. So after week two of that, we started saying, hey, you know, we got to run a lot more no more belly. And we just, we, I mean, we never tagged our motions or anything like that. If it was no more belly, um, we call it like rip, no more belly left. And then, but if we wanted to run uh, belly left, like rip belly left for jet motion, we just go rip belly left. And they knew the right half was going in jet motion to the split inside. So I, I think we, and they knew if they heard no mo, they did belly sweep. So um, with that being said, that's what, when belly sweep started hitting a lot. When we ran a lot of no mo belly, and then all of a sudden we started having that guy going instead of. One percent of the time, that ended up being about fifteen percent of our time. You know what I mean? On our offense, he's run a belly sweep, and we had a lot of success with it. Um, I think the worst we did was like two or three yard gain. Um, we never busted a long run with it, but it was a good fifteen twenty yard play for us. Um, it really did well um, when we played forty teams because the overhang outside linebacker always read the wing. He di- he dived in and. Uh, you know, and that's the O line coach. I always taught it what hey, just waggle. Yeah. You I mean really, it really it's is. That's all it is. That's all it is. And then uh, you know, you pull him pin and then that other guy um is flat down the line on his horse and you see the first opposite color jersey, you just block him. And um it was a heck of a play. I mean, I think it's one of the better constraint plays. Um, but you gotta get really good at running belly no mo. And no more belly can be pretty hard, man. That oh yeah, that that's an attitude play. I mean, there's no influences. Line up and go. And I loved it, but I've seen some teams struggle with it. But um, I, I think the first part of the puzzle, if you want to run belly sweeping, you better run no more bell, belly, and you better do it effectively enough to where that inside linebackers everyone bites on the belly fake. Yeah, and you hit it up and running. Well, that's that's where we go back and we talked and we talked in episode four is some of the formational stuff. That's where that near and far uh, I call it near and far, and we have some other terminology in our offense, but I'm not going to talk about our offense's terminology. Um, well, I call it near and far that two back where full back and then half back. I mean that's where that's that's where this play can be more effective is because you have no mobility. That's that's what that is is. Yeah. You, you're that play side wing. It just inserts from the backfield. You fake the belly. Yeah. Here comes your guy. He's just got to move his butt. Um, that was our number one formation that we did it. Uh, we, yeah. we would do it out of a, your basic red and blue, too. Yeah. Uh, we, but, I mean, uh, you know, so I mean, your old school single wing formation right there is, uh, and to the point being, and again, we ran, you guys ran what? Uh, a blast play out, of power type play out of that yeah. down. Well, it's pretty uh, much the formation, formation that's so, in our, our yeah, podcast you logo. Respect to that side. You gotta you gotta yeah. respect it, right? But then you also have belly to the weak side. Our goal was to always have three plays 
that we can run to either side of the formation that they had to prepare for. And for that formation, you know, we had belly, we had belly, belly, um, sweep, and we had power. But when we got in that formation, we shifted to it. But um, it was just kind of getting after it. And but I think that's the one thing you got to do is yeah. but, uh, really effectively run it. And you can't get in a special formation because I I can tell you right now, I'm a subpar coach. And I can get my guys ready that if there's a specific formation, they run the specific play. Yeah. I got... There's too many eyes. People are going to see it. So it, if you see no more belly, but you don't run no more belly, they're going to pick up belly sweep, and it's, it's a disaster. Oh, yeah. I've been there, done that. Don't make the mistake we made. And, and I think to run it, and I think part of the reason we didn't run it is you have to have two guards that can move. I mean, that's, you, I mean, it, that's underrated. Um, but, like, I mean, we might have the guards to run it next year, depending on just because we're younger. Yeah. Um, we'll be a little more athletic there. Um, just with some line adjustments, but I mean, we didn't have the guard. I mean, we would have had to reshuffle our who was wearing our offensive line. It would have affected other plays that ran. Plus, that backside guard too, man. If he can't move, man, yeah, you might as well not even run the play. I yeah, mean, exactly. I mean, I you mean, need well, guards. I mean, move. you could instead of I guess inserting the guy, you could have the guy arc block the alley. Yeah. Um, because, but other than that, man, if you don't have a guard that can scoot and boot a little bit. <laughs> Then I mean, you might as well just find another play. Get get good at a different play. That's the, the perimeter. I mean, that's kind of what we'll talk about it later. If you don't have a great guard, but you got a good quick guard, just say frig it and run a belly option. That could be your perimeter play. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Belly sweep just isn't your thing. I mean, that's totally fine. You get in your weak sets and belly. You know, and just my belly. I mean, that's a different way to hit the flank outside. So, but that's a different episode. But yeah. you better have two guards that can that can play. And I, I think the most effective teams are the got the uh, the teams that run buck sweep, run belly sweep pretty well. Yeah. Um, well, because that, that's at that not point, a good play if you don't have a lot of pulling guards. Yeah. Well, at at that point, you're probably running buck sweep to the strong side. You're gonna run mm-hmm. belly sweep to the weak side. Uh, yep. You're going belly to the weak side, um, and kind of stuff like that. Like, you're probably going to run down to the strong. Uh, like, you you have your full complement of plays at, at that point. And belly sweeps something you might not install that first year running wing T. Like, even if you run the belly series, it might be you're probably going to be running belly, belly pass, belly keep, belly follow, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. Um, depending on your quarterback, maybe belly option. Belly sweep might not be a year one play. It's kind of like it's that old double wing philosophy. When I when I, when I learned the double wing is that here's what you're going to do year one. Like you're going to do f- one, like one or two formations and run these plays. Year two you're going to expand your formations, add a couple plays. Year three you're going to get really crazy and do all these funky formations and because your kids have now built learning it. And like that, that's how we approach this year on offense. Like last year we ran jet. We were in belly about every physical way you could, some trap, and that was literally about it. And and belly pass, and I mean, I don't think we ran waggle. Um, I mean, that was year one. So we had a quarterback that could bail us out. Yeah, it and, and we and we ran some spread concepts just because we had a quarterback with a, a good arm. Uh, this year, like that playbook tripled. I mean, we ran down, 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 follow, down, keep. Uh, a different, couple different counters. We ran traps so well this year compared to the prior year, um, and so uh, what our OC called blast a variation of power, which to me was really just duo, because uh, we didn't really pull anybody. <laughs> um, so it hurts me to call it power. One, you talked about you preferred against even front. Did you, did you guys run it against an odd front when you were at Tip? Did you just prefer even? Oh uh, yeah, but like you said, we only played. Maybe two odd front teams. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them was uh, really not after. I think we only played one, and that uh, we played two. One was Shawnee, and the other one was uh, Troy. And it really was just a basic standard fifty, um, and we ran the living crap out of it. I, that was we couldn't run jet very well um, because it's just they saw jet. That was our base play, so they practiced to live in hell out of it, and their outside linebackers were dudes. Yeah, well, was so it that, was we it the year that Troy had all those studs? Huh? 
Huh? Was it that was that the year Troy had all their studs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. it was their best year ever defensively. They were just loaded everywhere. It, well, and, and long story short, where we struggled to hit the flank in the perimeter out there. So we said, all right, belly sweep was a play. So we, we ran, um, really how I defend the wing T is just running under front to the tight wing. And to the split inside, you should have a three and essentially an outside linebacker that kind of head up on the wing or outside shoulder. And uh, we were going to belly sweep to the split end a lot. I mean, and no matter what they wanted to do, um, and we went hurry up a lot, line up on the line and check to a play. And we had all our playbook signaled in. Um, we could signal it in. Um, but that was a that was our best perimeter play against Troy. Now, it's not saying much. It only went for like seven or eight yards. But <laughs> that was guess, a good I way to kind of help us from belly. Good shorten the game it kept us in the game yeah. that we had no business being in so um but yeah 50 50 defenses uh especially if they're playing an under front or even if they're getting in double threes um it's a great way to open up belly um I, i'm a big i'm a big believer and if you can't run belly then run belly sweet run belly option get them spaced out so you can run it right up the middle again yeah I get you, Coach. And the last thing I want to ask you before we go, because um, like I said, we don't we don't want to make these episodes super long. Uh, we're going to hit on some key points. If you have questions, you can follow up with us. And some stuff you might have questions for might be a later episode, like um, like some motions and stuff. We'll hit to a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll a- a- actively answer any questions. Um, but I, I want to kind of ask some technique stuff real quick. Is is there any like because I, I know how you are about footwork. I mean, that's that's one thing I really like about you. Um, if you weren't our DC, I, I mean, you you would probably be an O-line coach somewhere in, in the either the G-Walk or the NBL. Um, but in terms of footwork, is there any, like, key footwork any, you need to talk about on anybody on this play? I, I know you're big on, like, uh, flat steps, but is there anybody in here specifically that either is poorly coached? One thing I think is important – is and I think it's super important, and we can get into it. And it's really the one thing that you got to keep the deceptiveness of the wing tee. If there isn't no footwork that I would say that needs to be done or specific, other than it's got to look the same as belly, it's got to mirror it. Uh, and, and the hard part about it is when you got when you run in uh, the play side and belly, the first two or three steps have got to look like you're Parker. And you're running right at that outside linebacker, and he's thinking about either wrong arming or getting ready to force. And at the last second, you dip around and loop him. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. If he goes out and doesn't sell it, that outside linebacker is making the play. Um, it's got to look like belly in the backside. I used to say, hey, it's just like a gut, the first two steps. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you want it to look like belly hit as much as you possibly can. It's got a mirror. And um, that was my big emphasis teaching point was like, look, guys, not tight enough, not tight enough, not not tight enough. Because if you run belly, and the way we run belly, we ran it good enough, is that outside linebacker wants to spill it. Well, he wants to run. You know what I mean? If you run it well enough and you run and you do the step perfect like it should be, your first three steps, that outside linebacker is easy to hook. Yeah. If that guy's getting lazy or a little antsy and not disciplined, then that outside linebacker is just not stupid. You know what I mean? When you play big level football like we do, and a, a lot of you guys do, you gotta have you gotta make sure your O line is disciplined and they take their first three steps perfectly, just like it would the foot like belly. And that goes for belly. That goes for just about any kind of series. Well, speaking of big school football, I saw this today, and I still don't really believe it. I'm looking. Did you see the Max Preps um, uh, toughest playoff bracket regions today? Yeah, that's all, pretty interesting. All, all, our it. division was our division one, three, uh, number three, right? No, our yeah. our, our division is fifth in the country in playoff difficulty. Like, and I, I want to go through this real quick because I know there's some wing T teams in this, uh, especially like in Georgia. Georgia has some good wing T teams and. We're working on getting a couple of those guys on here. Um, I, I have some phone numbers I have to use here soon, but I'm letting coaches finish their seasons. Um, but number one in the country is Georgia 7A. Um, 
Division one in in Ohio is the second toughest playoff bra- playoff re- whatever however you want to call it playoff bracket in the country. Alabama seven A is three. Florida's five A is four. The the Ohio Division two, which is what we coach in presently, is the fifth hardest playoff bracket. Now a lot of that has to do because La Salle's in our region and they have eighteen Division one athletes every year. Our region's dumb, and then there's like another one that has like two super teams. Yeah, but they had to get out of the regions. So yeah. that way they could make it to the state semis. Yeah, the, the regions are easier than the state semis. It's, it's depressing. Um, f- six is Florida 7A. Seven is Arizona's Open Division, which I didn't know existed until today when Coach Bartley was texting me, and I'm still – yeah, it's a whole other conversation. Um, eight is Louisiana Division One. Nine is Georgia's 6A. And running out of the top ten is Utah's 6A. Um, it's good for Utah. Um, but I don't know. That just came to my mind. I mean, it probably means nothing, and people are probably rolling their eyes at that right now. And I, it's, it's, I just think it's funny. Um, but yeah. So, um, any last thoughts on belly sweep before we go, Coach? No. Uh, just get really good at belly and mirror, at, try to mirror it. And uh, um, I have some clay diagrams and some rule sheets. If you guys ever want um, that, I still have. If you guys ever want it, you just let me know, and um, I'll send that over to you. That's all PDFs. So, um, other than that, uh, it was a blast talking belly sweep. It was a heck of a play. Hope you guys added to your playbook. Awesome, Coach. Well, thank you. Um, this was episode six of the Gap Down Backer podcast, uh, talking belly sweep. Um, episode seven coming up, uh, we're going to talk belly follow. And um, I know some of you are probably like, well, that's not really an overly entertaining episode. And Coach Jerry made that comment to me. But the more I thought about it is I can actually spend more than five minutes talking about it and – that's the only preview I'm going to give you for that because I think I'm frustrated with it, and that's where I'm going to leave that conversation. Um, and then episode eight, we'll probably start Belly Pass. Um, that's a little bit to be decided. Um, I have some thoughts, and we'll kind of continue from there. But um, thank you for following us on the Gap Down Backer podcast. Uh, you, again, you can follow us on YouTube um, and a plethora of other sites like Anchor um, and others um, if you want to check them out there. Um, we appreciate your support. Um, and Coach Derry, it was good talking to you. You too. Subscribe. <laughs>